you can imagine, all kinds of emotions uh, and challenges. Uh, Big Mike's a very good friend of mine. He's the reason I'm at the football club. And so we had to process that. We had to process that as a group. Uh, the beautiful part about it all is Mike's still with the football club. Technically, I think he'll be my boss again soon, very quickly. So, And Mike has been a great servant of this club. Uh, got us to within one game of the champion, uh, the Shield last day and seven minutes from the semi-final and winning that and going on for the championship. So there's a lot of respect for the work that Mike's done and will continue to do. And then also now we need to get back to the business of playing football and winning football matches. So we've taken time to process that across the group. Everybody said now was the time collectively for mirrors and not windows. We have to look internally at why we're in this situation, take accountability, uh, and now we're going to step up to the plate and go forward. What was that moment like when they came to you and said, hey, will you take this interim job? Um, in all honesty, I needed to talk to Mike. <laughs> you know, he's a great friend of mine. We needed to hash that out and, and talk about the responsibility. Obviously, thankful to the Vartel family and the Paul and Thorns and everybody involved and Karina who recognised my quality to bring me here. My experience in the first place was to help Mike and Karina in their sort of infancy and their of So I had no doubt I've got the quality, you know, the experience uh, and the, the players belief that we can go forward all together. Um, so yeah, bittersweet, but once you get into it and I get out on the football field and do what I love doing with the players and get their love for doing it, then, uh, it's just looking forward now. What was that conversation with Mike like? Two mates shooting the breeze, discussing life. You know, um, I went round his house for beers and tears. I think is uh, more tears from me. If you get to know me, I'm not one to hide my emotions, and I'll cry at a good romantic movie. So uh, it was emotional, as you'd imagine. You know, that's the unfortunate side of our business. Uh, but again, it's great. We can laugh together. He's still going to be around the place. He's got so much skill set to offer this football club. And what he did last year and taking everything that had gone before him, he's done a fantastic job. So we'll be seeing a lot more of Mike Norris and me and him are still Batman and Robin. Coach, I'm, I'm sure you've had to think about this a lot, but how do you turn things around here? Look, the talent's here. Uh, the tactics were there. I think, honestly, in terms of some of the performances, um, they were there and we haven't got always the results and you look at the expected goals we're second highest in the league so we're slightly underperforming there and then if you look at goals against we're slightly underperforming there so it's nothing the players don't know and again i asked them to do two things this week look at them and accountability and we'll all look at ourselves and then come back with their authentic selves authenticity is the key and my job is to take all of the characteristics of these players and put them into a jigsaw puzzle to find the best look for this Saturday and then it will change the next week but the players need to be authentically themselves play with freedom play with enjoyment what a, what a privilege represent Portland Thorns in Portland in the middle of summer or is it spring I'm not too sure it's beautiful we'll today <laughs> <laughs> what is this opportunity though for you just to put your stamp on what this club it certainly what it has been and what it can be again despite this first month yeah look anybody who knows me I don't change my attitude my enthusiasm my passion energy my just sheer delight to be out every day with the players is why I'm here. Whether that's assistant coach, interim coach, uh, you could get me sweeping the stands, I'll be as excited because I'm in professional football and what a privilege. So it, it's a great honor, a great opportunity. Um, and I just want to do the best for everybody in Paul and the 25,000 25, fans every week. It's an amazing club to be a part of. We want to send them home on a Saturday evening happy. Now you're the voice in the locker room. You're the one in there right now. It's been a couple years for you since you've been the head of a, of a program. So what has this week been for you as the main voice in that? Yeah, it's it's different because um, I said to Mike, I've got the easiest job in the world. I'm right behind him and then 20 feet behind him if it's not going so well. The head coach's position is the loneliest position in football. You know, that's that's just reality. Uh, you, you wake up at 1.30 and your immediate thought is how are you going to frame the, the, the tone, the energy, the the vibe, all of those things that, uh, you know, I've probably aged another two years in the last two days and I'm only 25, but I mean, it's taken its toll on me. So no, it is what it is. It's, it's a different pressure. It's one you embrace, like pressure is a privilege, right? So everybody here, 
every staff member, every player, everyone behind the scenes, we're all together. Mike included, he's a big part of this and we're ready to put our best foot forward. And that's the messaging. I don't need to speak too much because I've got 27 leaders in that dressing room. You mentioned your friendship with him. How do you go about then kind of balancing his influence and putting your own spin on things? Look, football's football. The tactics, the uh, principles, you know, the, the way we go about business. Uh, don't forget how we started last season, how close we got to winning it. We're not far away. I don't want anybody to forget that or, you know, reflect poorly on Mike Norris because he is a great football man and a great football brain. And he's the only reason I'm here and continue to be here. So that's all good. Um, I've got to just be my authentic self. Players will get to know me and understand me and demands as they've known me, but now in a different role. Ultimately, players will win your football matches. They need to go out, play with the read and play with the quality they have, enjoy their football, and we'll, we'll be just fine. And then Rob, uh, what has the reaction talks with the players been like for you? Yeah, look, every player processes things in different ways. And again, you go back to authenticity. I need them to feel how they're going to feel. I had a different relationship with them because I'm the assistant coach. Sometimes you can tell the assistant coach something that you can't tell the head coach. Well, you know how dressing rooms are and everything else. And I'll, they know that message is going back and Mike's messaging to them through me. Now we're just finding a different way. But what I've asked is to be treated exactly the same. I'm not going to change my personality or my effort, enthusiasm, energy towards the group. It's just in a different capacity, a different role. I fully expect the same from them. Otherwise, we're not being the authentic selves that we need to be. We're not coming up with our identity as a team and them as a group. And it really is their team. I'm the custodian of it right now. So the players are behind that. They had their own internal meetings. They understand why we're in this situation and what we need to do better. But we're not far away either. Yeah, and then your first match is going to be against Houston, obviously. And uh, they're going through a new head coach and change, a new system and everything like that. Well, what are going to be the new challenges uh, playing this first game? <laughs> yeah, look, it's a new... They, they don't know what we're coming with. They're still developing their own. What I do know is that sometimes in adversity, teams are up, us versus the world. And I know they've had some challenges uh, and some change themselves. So we will give them their full respect. Uh, we know it's going to be a difficult game. And I've told our guys, we respect everybody, but we fear no one. Does the uncertainty with Maria Sanchez's situation change anything at all? Not at all. Okay. We've got to look into it. Like I said, it's less time for windows and more time for mirrors. This team has had four head coaches in four seasons now. You haven't been here for all of that by no. any means. Um, and yet they still have continued to win at a high level through everything they've been through with that and with a lot of other things. What makes this group so resilient? Yeah, resilience is, is the key and the characters um, uh, you know that resolve to to just come together, be a united group, collective. No matter what seems to have gone on outside, or you know, or the perception from outside, that's a tight knit group of women, and they're fabulously talented. And I've reminded of them that all week. They're such a talented bunch. They just need to go out, trust their instincts, trust their teammates, trust the character of the group, and they come out of it you know tough times don't last but tough people do so they're they're going to be just fine uh we just need to get back to being ourselves and enjoying it and showing everybody what we're really about do you have an idea how you get back to being yourselves trust in the players they're going to trust me all in together like i said there's no one reason why we we're where we are right now you can look at some of the performances gotham i don't think we deserve to lose at all Second half against Louisville, really, really good. You know, we'll look at those things in the X's and O's, but it's more the togetherness of the group uh, and what we can bring on a daily basis and challenge each other to continue to be better. That's the only way you get better in life. It's the only way you get better as a group. Uh, and let's push on all together, all, all for one. That is Ruth Wilder. Yeah, um, obviously getting to kind of start this new chapter at Providence Park, where debatably some of the best fans or the, the world. Uh, how does that feel? And is there anything you specifically want to say to the fans as we kind of start this next step in the, in the season? Yeah, who's debating it? No debate. we got the best fans in the world. Like this franchise, this football club, unbelievable. Rain or shine. Um, they understand football. They know moments. They know when they need to pick up the crowd. I remember a corner here in the semi-final and we needed a lift and it was a... They, they got behind the team. 
They are unbelievable. I want them to know that we all in this organization take the badge with a badge of honor, badge of pride, and it hurts us when we're not performing as well as we potentially can and should. And we're gonna take that pride, we're gonna take that honor, we're gonna take the passion and the collective group and we're gonna put our best foot forward and we need every single one of them to come and show up and lift these women to the heights that they know they can reach and we all know that they can reach. Thank you. Yeah.